Well, this weekend is an exciting weekend because it's the 14 year anniversary of our 24 seven prayer room. So I wanna personally invite you to come hear Rabbi speak during this important weekend. And also we're bringing in Luke Wood from the International House of Prayer, who will be giving some awesome uh, worship. He'll be doing some special songs on Friday and Sunday, and then doing a concert on Saturday, a full concert. And both days, Friday and Sunday, he'll be speaking as well. But Saturday will, will be specifically a concert, but we want to invite you to all three services Services, Friday at 7, Saturday at 7, and Sunday at 10.30 a.m. here at Line of Judah. We love you. Come celebrate the 14-year anniversary of our 24-7 prayer room with Luke Wood and Rabbi this weekend. We'll see you there. The Japanese society may be one of the most difficult societies anywhere in the world to penetrate. But you see, Jesus gave to all of us the command to make disciples of all nations. All nations, that's Japan. But we're here to preach the gospel. And I believe that there's power in the gospel. First of all, I want you to know tonight that God loves you. But our sins separate us from God. But the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believed in Him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Jesus Christ came from heaven to this earth and he took our sins and he died and he shed his blood on the cross for your sins. But on the third day, God raised his son to life. Are you sure your sins are forgiven? If you're not confident, I want you to get up out of your seat right now. So many people came forward, more than I could have imagined. What resonated with me the most is that God truly loves Japan. I came forward to ask God to forgive my sins. I came forward in front of God and in front of everyone to confess my sins and to surrender my all to God. We've seen many people come to faith in Christ. We're very grateful and thankful to God for this opportunity. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support. Thank you and God bless you.
praised forever. We will shout your name, God. I recently, in a Seeds of Revelation previously, was in the book of 2 Corinthians with you in chapter 1, talking about the ministry of comfort that we have by the Holy Spirit. Beloved one, God is always watching over you by His Spirit. He's continuously, night and day, shepherding your soul. And part of his shepherding ministry to you and I is a supernatural impartation of comfort through the Ruach HaKodesh. And so I want us to be confident today that we're never alone and that because we're following Jesus in this world, we're going to face situations that are going to cause us tremendous grief and hurt. But in the midst of the grief and the hurt that we'll experience, because of our faith in Yeshua the Messiah, in the midst of those times of persecution, heartache, and hurt, the ministry of the Ruach HaKodesh will be being imparted to us. I'm reading now from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 5. Hear the word of God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, in other words, the Bible says, everybody that desires to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Part of following Jesus, the scripture says right here, is an abundance of suffering. So we need to get that through our head, what it's really like to be a disciple. There's an abundance of suffering that comes with being a disciple of Jesus. But the verse goes on to say, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ Jesus. Let me read the whole verse. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. So we need to put on the armor of a soldier and we need to set our faith and teeth towards the wind, recognizing that we're gonna take a few hits. We're gonna take a few knocks. This is part of what it means to follow Jesus. But through it all, God is gonna bless us and the ministry of the comfort of the Holy Spirit will be so deep, my friend. God loves you and I with an eternal love. And beloved, he's filling us in a deeper and deeper way as we come into a more and more meaningful experience with him. Baruch Hashem.
Shalom, everybody. I'm Matthew Hartman from Lion of Judah. Thanks for joining us here for this webcast tonight. I just wanted to share something that uh, the Lord put on my heart. Um, and I just I think it's going to encourage you. I know it's encouraged me. It's changed, it's changed my life and changed my walk uh, with Yeshua. So I just uh, I want to share this uh, story with you briefly. Uh, several months ago, I was, uh, it was early in the morning. I was spending my time with the Lord. I do this every morning. I just sit before Him and I, and I talk to Him and I, and I listen to Him. And, uh, you know, just to prepare myself for the day and, uh, you know, just to, to prepare myself, uh, you know, for, for my walk with the Lord. Uh, the Lord. The Holy Spirit spoke to me in a very powerful way. And, uh, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about how, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the Lord encountered them and it, and it shook them. And, and uh, you know, to be honest with you, this is the first time this has happened to me. And it was, uh, it was very um, profound. And it's, uh, again, it's totally changed, um, you know, changed the way I operate, changed the way I think, changed the way I pray. Um, you know, it's, it's changed the way I, I view and look at things in my life in Christ right now. So this is what the Holy Spirit said me. He asked me one question, one simple question, and again, it shook me to my core. He asked me if I thought I was ready for Jesus to return. Again, he said, are you ready for Jesus to come back? Now, I know that when the Lord asks me a question, he's not really looking for an answer. He knows the answer. He's looking for me to search myself, and he's he's telling me something about myself that that I haven't seen or that I've been you know ignoring and suppressing. So being alone, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there. There's nowhere to go. I'm confronted with this question, and I and I the only thing I can do is search my heart, and I can, the only thing I can do is is ask you know ask myself am I Am I ready? And I knew when the Holy Spirit asked me this question, He wasn't asking me if I thought I was saved, if I thought I was going to heaven. He was asking me something very specific. When He asked me the question, Are you ready for Jesus to come back? It was full of revelation, full of understanding for me. And what He was saying when He asked me that question is, Do you love the thought or the reality of Jesus coming back more than you love this life? And I, I searched my heart. If you would ask me that, I would tell you quickly, I'm ready. I'm ready for him. And I, I, would, I would give you verses and scripture that, you know, um, you know, just right out of my intellect quickly, you know, about how I'm ready for his return. And this is what it's going to look like. And it's going to be glorious. And, you know, but when he asked me, I had to, I had to stop. I had to pause and search my heart. And the, the, the hard conclusion that I came to was no. You know, some of you know my story. Some of you know my testimony. You know, I was a drug addict for a long time. I grew up without a father, you know. And, um, you know, for the first time in my life, I, I love who I'm becoming. I love myself. I have an amazing marriage. I'm married to an amazing woman, Tabitha. You know, we have a great life together serving the Lord. I, I, you know, we both love to evangelize and share Jesus with people. It's amazing to see Jesus touch their lives and, and you know, to see what he, you know, to see him reveal himself to them and, and for them, you know, to come into this relationship with them. And, you know, I mean, honestly, I love my Christian life. You know, I'm clean. I have a hope. I'd never had hope before. I have a hope and, and a purpose. And it's just, you know, really exciting. And I really love this life. So it was really confronting to me. And again, I, I, all I could say was no. That I, that I'm, I'm, I wasn't, I, you know, I'm not ready for him to come back. Uh, you know, but, but by the grace of God, you know, he asks us these questions so we can search our hearts and so that we can, uh, you know, come into alignment with what he's doing. So again, you know, this, this encounter has totally changed my relationship with the Lord. It's changed my walk. It's changed my prayer life. It's changed uh, my, my reading of the Word. You know, it's, it's changed my everyday life, I can tell you now. And uh, as, as I begin to practice these truths that I'm going to show you, that I'm going to share with you, it has, I just find myself being more and more and more rooted and encouraged in the truth that I am ready for Him to return, that I am ready to come back. So several years ago, um, 
I had just begun doing street ministry, outreach ministry here, um, you know, through Line of Judah into the city of Toledo. And I was very excited, you know, I, uh, to share with rabbis some of the things that we were seeing happening. You know, I sit down and I share, share some of the stories with them. And he asked me, he said, so have you seen anyone, has anyone given their life to Christ yet? Has anyone given their life to Yeshua? And I told him, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not really trying to press anybody that way. You know, we're just loving on people and, you know, praying with people and blessing people and letting the Holy Spirit do His work. And Rabbi said this to me. He gave me this piece of advice and it was powerful and I applied it and it changed. I seen it have great fruit and great effect on our, on our uh, ministry, on our outreach. He said, begin with the end in mind. Again, begin with the end in mind. So what is the end in mind? The end in mind when we're doing outreach is to see people give their, their lives to Christ, to see them come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Why else are we out there, right? We're not out there just to do good things. We're out there to see people get saved and to see the kingdom of God built. So we need to begin with the end in mind. We begin to apply that principle again, and, and we begin to see fruit, and we begin to see, uh, you know, see response. And it's beautiful. So I, I just want to, I share that to say that if we apply, if we, if we apply the same truth, if we begin with the end in mind and the same truth about being ready for Jesus' return, we'll be ready. We'll be ready. This is, this is what Paul said to Timothy uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Paul wrote this to Timothy. In the future, in the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. To all who have loved his appearing, he has a reward for you, laid up on that day, in the future, the day of, for those who love his appearing. And Jesus said this in Luke 12, 34, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now again, I, you know, I'm doing good things and I'm reaching out and, you know, doing outreach and sharing my faith and, you know, I mean, I pray and, and I'm seeking the Lord with all of my heart, you know, but I haven't necessarily been living with the end in mind. The end in mind is that Jesus is going to come back and he's going to come back and he's going to, he's going to scoop his bride up. We're going to spend eternity with him and with the father. That's the end of mind. If we look at, uh, Revelation chapter 19, the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is the end in mind. That's the culmination of it, is that we're going to be face to face with our King, and we're going to spend eternity with Him. So we need to begin with that end in mind. And I know if we apply these truths to, to our life and the way we're living now, these truths I'm going to share with you, I know that we'll be ready. And so I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling this message today, Living for That Day. Now that day, some of you may not know, is often, uh, you know, referred to in the Bible. When they refer to that day in the Bible, they're talking about the day of the Lord, the day of Jesus' return. Simply put, the day that Jesus comes back. He came once, he's coming back again. He came once as a Savior, he's coming back as a judge. And uh, that day, when he comes back, that, so you hear that day, and that's what it means, it's the return of Jesus. So again, I'm calling this message living for that day, for the day that he returns. Now by doing these things I'm going to share with you, I think we'll be prepared and we'll be ready. Setting our hearts on eternal things will prepare us for Yeshua's return. Again, setting our hearts on eternal things will prepare us for Yeshua's return. How do we set our hearts on eternal things? So I'm going to give us three, uh, you know, three keys, three, three points that we can follow that will help us set our hearts on eternal things and be prepared for Yeshua's return. The first thing I want to share with you is through the Word, we can set our hearts on eternal things. The Word, the written Word, is eternal. The written Word is everlasting. Flowers fade the grass withers, but the word of God abides forever. Yeshua said this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. The creation will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. They're everlasting. 
They're eternal. They're eternal. Yeshua's word is eternal. Again, here he says, My word is eternal. It will not pass away. And in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking and he says, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in me. And uh, they begin to grumble, and many, many grumbled, and they left, and they said, who can hear this? And they, they walked away from him. And Jesus said this to his disciples. He said this to, 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 to his disciples. And so he said, are you going to leave me too? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. Again, Yeshua, the written word is eternal. Yeshua's words are eternal this is, this is his, he has eternal life. His word is eternal life. So I just want to encourage you today, the way we can apply this, the way we can apply this to, to uh, being ready for Yeshua's return is uh, spending time in, in the word every day and making it a point, making a point to spend that, spend that time. And, and as, you know, as we begin to do that, we begin to build it up as a treasure in our heart. It begins to fill our heart. It be, this, eternal, this eternal word begins to, to, to engulf us. And we become this eternal word, and the eternal word becomes us. And, and it, you know, that's where our treasure will be, is in this eternal word. And I just want to encourage you, uh, you know, as well, to, to not only spend time in the word daily, but to often... Spend time. Make it a point to spend time reading verses concerning the return of Yeshua. You know, really get it rooted in you. Get it grounded in your heart. Spend time. These, these, the return of Yeshua is not a big lofty doctrine that's, you know, for the mature. The return of Yeshua is a very basic foundation of the gospel message. That Jesus died for our sins. He was crucified. He bore all of our sins upon himself on the cross. He was buried. On the third day, he resurrected. He ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back. He's coming back as a righteous judge and to set things straight here on the earth. That is the gospel message. His return is a foundation. It's not only for the mature Christian, but it's for every Christian. It's for every believer. That's a it's a foundation. It's a block. Without the thought of without the reality of Jesus' return, then our faith is, is nothing. It's it's worthless. As Paul said, we are uh, uh, you know to be pitied above all men. So it's it's a foundational it's a foundational principle of our gospel message. It's not a it's not a, a lofty thing, uh, you know, for only the mature believer. Again, setting our hearts on eternal things will prepare us. For Yeshua's return. And here's another way that I want to talk about. About being able to prepare our hearts for Yeshua's return. How another another point that we can that we can practice that will set our hearts on eternal things and prepare us for Yeshua's return. And the second point, the second practice that I want to share with you is prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is communication with the eternal God. Prayer again, it's communication with the eternal God. It's simply conversation between man and the creator. It's conversation between the creation and the one who has created him. The God in heaven. He, he hears you. He's not only in heaven, right? He's in you. He's with you and he's in you. His spirit is in you. If you are a born again believer, then his spirit is in you. And he hears you. And it's that communication that... Uh, that building a relationship with him through through communication and that's prayer is communication with the eternal god so listen to the word of the lord this is the this is this is god himself speaking through the prophet jeremiah the 29th chapter verse 12 and 13 jeremiah writes this as the lord spoke to him then you will call upon me and I, and come and pray to me and i will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. You will seek him and find him. Listen again. Then you will call upon me. That's prayer. You will call upon me and come to me and pray. And I will listen to you. He'll hear you. You will seek me 
when you search for me, you will find me. You will find him. If you spend time in communication with God, it's a two-way conversation that he wants to have with you. You share your heart. And it's being genuine. It's not, you know, thou Lord, oh, there, you know, mighty God in heaven. I mean, those things are true. He is a mighty God in heaven. But it's, you know, Abba, Father, Daddy, like you know, be genuine and share his heart. Share your true heart with, with him. He knows your heart. He knows it already. Don't be scared to, to tell him, you know, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this thing, God. Lord, Father, I'm struggling with the thought of being in love with the return of your son, with the return of Jesus. I'm struggling with that. Father, I find myself loving this life more than I love the thought of your son's return. And he'll answer you. He'll hear you, and he'll answer you. He'll, he'll listen to you, and you'll find him. He'll answer you, and he'll, he'll begin to change your heart. As you spend time with this eternal God speaking to him, he will, he will change your heart. He'll shape you and mold you. I want to tell you, you can, you can ask him these very questions, you know. You can say, God, you can say, Father, you know, your, your word says that eye has not seen and ear has not heard and that it hasn't even entered into the hearts of man what you have in store for us. Show this to me, God. Make this real to me, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask you, will you make Jesus' return more real to me? Show me what you showed John on the island of Patmos, God. Show me what you revealed to John. Show me these things, God. He says, if you call to me, I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. I'm, that's, that's prayer. That's prayers. Communication with God. Knowing God is eternal life. Knowing God is eternal life. This is what Yeshua said in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Again, this is knowing. How do we get to know somebody? How do we know our best friends? How do we know our spouses? How do we know our, our parents? How do we know our children? We know them by communicating with them, by sharing our heart, by listening and hearing their heart. Again, this prayer is it's a two-way street. It's communication. Communication is, is it's, it's, two pe it's two people or multiple people coming in and sharing and speaking. And one listens and one speaks and one speaks and one listens. So again, knowing God is eternal life, we can know Him. Just knowing Him is eternal life. And by knowing Him, the more that we get to know this eternal life, the more that we get to know this eternal life, we will be prepared for Yeshua's return. We'll, we'll, our hearts will be set on eternal things and we'll be prepared for Yeshua's return. I mean, to be honest with you, it's this very practice of prayer this very practice of communication with God, of spending time with God, that, that here I am today, that He spoke to my heart in this way, that He spoke to my heart in this way and, and brought to realization to me that I actually wasn't prepared, that I, that I was in love with things of the world more than I was in love with Him. So I just I want to encourage you, spend time. There's, there's a principle of first fruits, and Rabbi Schneider teaches us all the time about giving God the first time of your day. So I just want to encourage you today, if you don't do it, give yourself 15 minutes. Start out with 15 minutes of just sitting before the Lord. You wake up in the morning and just sit before the Lord. Maybe you need to grab your coffee. Grab your coffee, sit, sit before the Lord, sit at your kitchen table, wherever that might be, and just speak to Him. Speak to Him. It doesn't even have to be from your mouth, just from your heart. Just say, God, make these things real to me. God, make your Son more real to me. Father, show me, you know, the Yeshua's return. Show me these things, God. Show me, show me these things. Fifteen minutes, and I promise you, you'll fall in love with the process, and it'll just as you the more you get to know this eternal God, the more you'll want to know him, the more you'll realize you don't know him, and the more you'll want to spend time with him. Again, prayer is communication with the eternal God, and through prayer we can set our hearts on eternal things. Setting our hearts on eternal things will prepare us for Yeshua's return. The last point, the last principle, the last um, application that I want to give you is fellowship. Through fellowship, we can set our hearts on eternal things. What is fellowship? 
fellowship is 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 a uh, uh, spending time together. It's uh, you know when we're spending time in this prayer, we're fellowshipping with God. But I, I say fellowship with the body regularly. This fellowship with the body regularly is, you know, maybe sitting down and having a meal. Maybe sitting down and having a cup of coffee together. And, uh, you know, it says, the writer of Hebrews wrote this in the 10th chapter, 21st, 25th verse. He said, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. We see the day is drawing near. We see that chaos is, is ever increasing. The darkness is getting darker. It's getting thick. It's getting heavy. Uh, we see that, I mean, today we're closer than we were yesterday. Tomorrow we're going to be closer to the return of Jesus than we are today. So we're ever getting closer. It's ever drawing more near. So I know that many of us, we, we refer, you know, we might know this, this scripture and we might think that it's simply talking about gathering together on a Friday night service or a Sunday service. And it is that, but it's much more than that. It's much more than that. We can't really build true friendships and fellowship with one another if we're only doing it on Friday or Sunday once a week and we're only doing it in the sanctuary, in the building here. So I want to encourage you today to fellowship with the body regularly. You know, find a, find a brother, find a sister that you can have coffee with, that you can eat with. Fellowship with the body about eternal things. Don't just come together and talk about anything. Don't just come together and talk about the weather or talk about Aunt Sally or talk about the, you know, the TV program or something that you might have watched. Come together, fellowship with the body about eternal things. Be very intentional because it's very easy to get led astray in your conversations and to talk about all kinds of stuff, to talk about work or, you know, Sally's basketball game or, you know, Bobby's basketball game. Be, we have to be focused Kavana, it's a Hebrew word, focus. It's a, a divine focus. We have to be focused and may you know and be intentional about this fellowship about eternal things. I mean, set in your mind that when you when you get together, you're gonna talk about the Lord's return. This is what Yeshua said in Luke chapter six, verse forty five. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. As we, as we uh, fellowship about these eternal things, as we get in conversations, intimate conversations with one another about these eternal things, again, it fills our heart. So we've spent time in our word reading about eternal things. We've spent time in communication and prayer with the Lord, talking about eternal things with the eternal one. And now our heart's filled. And now these things can begin to come out of our mouth. And look, it's a cycle. So as these things come out of our mouth, it makes room for more to come in. And then we can just continually be filled with this eternal thing. It can come out. It can come in. It can come out as we, as we speak them out of our mouth. It says this in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. They overcame him, talking about Satan. They overcame Satan, him, because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. As they testified, as they gave their testimony, they were strengthened and encouraged. These conversations, these fellowship times, these intentional, these kind of intentional fellowship times will encourage the heart and it will prepare the heart for Jesus' return. I, me, myself, I make it a couple of different points. I lead a men's group, Iron Sharpens Iron, and uh, I, you know, we meet each week. But once a month, I make a very specific, intentional, um, you know, in my heart that we're going to talk about the return of Jesus, that we're going to talk about verses, and we're going to talk about chapters that are very specifically geared uh, on the return of Yeshua, on the return of, of our King. And, uh, you know, and then I also have, you know, fellowship and time at my home. Uh, you know, there's a couple of, of gentlemen that I meet with occasionally. You know, we sit down, we have coffee, maybe we share a meal. And we're very intentional about our conversations and about testifying about Jesus' return and, and, and sharing what he's done and things like this that he's revealed to our hearts. So again, you know, uh, fellowshipping with the body about eternal things. It will encourage your heart. Setting our hearts on eternal things will prepare us for Yeshua's return. So I want to briefly um, review, again, these three points that I'm giving you. And if you put these things into practice, it will set your heart on eternal things. And you will be prepared for Yeshua's return. Through the word, we can set our hearts 
on eternal things. Through prayer, we can set our hearts on eternal things. And lastly, through fellowship, we can set our hearts on eternal things. I pray that this message encourages you. I pray that it strengthens your faith and builds you up. I pray that it, it gives you revelation and uh, just it gives you um, insight into walk, walking into a deeper relationship and in being prepared for Jesus' return. I love you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And shalom. We want to invite you to Lion of Judah, a dynamic place of worship in Toledo, Ohio. We're not wasting time here. People are going through real struggles like abuse and anger and hopelessness, and people need solutions. Come to our services, and you'll experience Jesus bringing healing to your soul. We, we want to see solutions come to your relationship issues. We want to see health and restoration in marriages, and also bringing couples together to bring power and strength to their everyday walk with God. Services are as follows.